In Proposition 48, we prove that given any triangle, if the sum of the two smaller squares are congruent to the larger square, then the angle opposite the larger square must be a right angle. To begin, we are given triangle ABC, and we are also given that square FGAC plus square AHIB is congruent to square CBED. What we want to prove in the end is that angle BAC is congruent to a right angle. First, with point A and line AC, we apply Proposition 11 to construct a perpendicular line JA. Therefore, angle JAC is congruent to a right angle. Next, with line AB and line JA, we apply Proposition 3 to make line JA congruent to line AB. With postulate 1, we create line JC. Now from proposition 46, we prove that with any line, we can always construct a square. Therefore, on line JA, we construct a square. Now notice that squares AHIB and JMHA have a side in common. And by definition of a square, all sides are congruent. Therefore, both squares must be congruent. Next, on line AC, we construct a square by proposition 46. Now, since squares CAON and FGAC have a side in common, and by definition of a square, all sides are congruent, then it follows that square CAON is congruent to square FGAC. Now, with the following two facts, we apply axiom 2 to attain square JMHA plus square CAON is congruent to square AHIB plus square FGAC. Next, with line JC, we apply Proposition 46 one last time to construct a square. Now remember that angle JAC is a right angle. And in Proposition 47, we prove that with any right triangle, the sum of the two smaller squares is always congruent to the square opposite the right angle. Therefore, square KLJC must be congruent to square JMHA plus square CAON. Since square JMHA plus square CAON is congruent to square FGAC plus square AHIB, then it follows by axiom 1 that square KLJC is congruent to square FGAC plus square AHIB. Now, since square FGAC plus square AHIB is congruent to square CBED, then by axiom 1, square KLJC is congruent to square CBED. Now, since both squares are congruent, and by definition of a square, all sides are congruent, then line CJ must be congruent to line CB. Looking at triangle JAC and triangle BAC, we can see that they have a side in common. Specifically, line CA is congruent to line CA. Now, since both triangles have a corresponding side, side, and side, then by proposition 8, triangle JAC is congruent to triangle BAC. And angle JAC is congruent to angle BAC. Since angle JAC is congruent to a right angle, then it follows that angle BAC is also a right angle. Therefore, we have proven that with any given triangle, if the sum of the two smaller squares are congruent to the larger square, then the angle opposite the larger square must be a right angle. So this is Euclid's proof of the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. For a complete look at all the propositions used in this proof, click on the right annotation for a playlist on Book 1 of Euclid's Elements. And thanks for watching.